This is the Thermotech Flow Ring 240. It is Thermotech's 240mm RGB liquid cooler. Now this is pretty interesting and we're obviously going to be taking a look at it in the video, so do stick around. So first off, let's take a look at what you get in the box. Of course you get the cooler itself, which is a fairly standard Asetek design. You also get all the mounting hardware included with it and the 220mm ring fans. These are the RGB fans. You also get the hub, which kind of controls all of the, the fans, the pump and the lighting. And of course, you get the floppy power to Molex adapter as the hub uses the floppy power connector. And it also has a uh, internal USB header to dual uh, micro USB, you know, standard external headers. This is kind of strange as it's a, uh, the actual hub itself only uses one micro USB port. So I'm not really sure why they needed two here, but either way, it does kind of add to the cable clutter as you'll see in a little bit uh, later. As with most 240 millimeter AIOs, you have a relatively thin radiator. I think it's a 15 mil design, which obviously is about the same thickness as the fans themselves. And therefore you're looking at uh, around about a 30 to 35 millimeter overall thickness. So if you do have some clearance issues with slightly thicker 240 millimeter radiators, this one might work a little bit better for you. The end tanks on either side are fairly small and the tubing itself is actually pretty small as well. It's a really thin diameter, which is kind of surprising uh, just from you know comparison to other coolers that uh, I have here and have tested and stuff like that. So kind of surprising. The pump head itself is fairly large, comes with pre-applied thermal paste. And as I mentioned, uses a fairly standard Asetek design for uh, CPU cooler mounting, where you basically attach the back plates and the standoffs and then the sort of mounting plates all to the CPU socket before you install it. And then you put the pump head on, sort of twist it around slightly and then screw everything down and that's how you install it. It's a fairly simple and easy procedure, but uh, can be a little bit limited at times, especially when trying to apply a lot of pressure to a certain chip. Both the fans and the pump actually have a standard internal USB header on them. Don't get this confused with a, an actual USB header, as obviously this needs 12 volts and stuff like that. But with the controller hub itself, these have basically the internal USB hub connectors on them so that you can connect it up to their hub. You can connect up to five devices to those hubs. So if you want to add two extra fans to have this in a push-pull configuration, then you can do. But do bear in mind that uh, A, the, the wires that come both on the pump and on the fans are incredibly long and it means that when you actually go to install the uh, system in your case, you're looking at a massive sort of rat's nest of cables that I physically had to hang out of the back of the case because I just couldn't cable manage it uh, with the just sheer volume. And also the fact that they've got sort of um, almost like heat shrink, heat shrink tubing all along the wires, which means that they're pretty bulky and heavy wires. Uh, so yeah, just a little bit a uh, little bit difficult to cable manage in that one. Once you've got it installed though, it does look fairly nice of course. One thing I do want to mention is that a lot of the fans that you see with RGB are, will, be, will be quite smooth in their operation, especially when you have sort of addressable LEDs like these ones, where you can have multiple colors on at any one time. With these, it, it, all of the, the animations that the software provides are very kind of static uh, or jumpy. So it will, you know, jump from one color to the next color to the next color to the next color and there's no smooth to it, there's no transitions, so it's actually a little bit more of a, a limited RGB experience than some of the other coolers and stuff like that that you might find. So it just uh, depends on personal preference. Obviously, if you're buying this sort of cooler, then you're someone who wants the flashy RGB option, and this isn't the nicest one I've seen. Moving on to the performance and the temperatures that this provides, I'm using a 7700K with the stock thermal paste that it comes with pre-applied. I'm using that as that's how most people are going to be using this cooler, as most people will not be you know scraping that off and putting some fresh stuff on so that's uh, that's the sort of testing method here i'm using prime 95 and i'd throw in some cinebench results or just testing but uh, either way cinebench was running around about 70 to 80 degrees celsius on the uh, 7700k with this cooler whereas with prime 95 you're actually running at around about 95 to 100 degrees celsius with that 7700k I was also mentioned that the noise level for both the fans and the pump was actually fairly high and there was especially a pretty annoying noise from the pump, uh, sort of a, a whirring uh, that could get pretty annoying even with side panels on and you know everything kind of closed up even in something like a fractal design case which is meant to kind of capture noise quite well. My experience with the software for this cooler was a little bit mixed. You have uh, fairly decent
wasn't relatively easy to use software here, but it didn't auto detect the fact that I had a, the Flow uh, 240 is an actual pump connected, so I had to, I had to manually select that as a, a device so that it would then work out what it was trying to control. I also found that, as I said, the uh, the lighting, especially in the wave mode, was very jumpy, so it was very kind of almost like a clock just ticking to the next color, and it wasn't very smooth or, or very uh, nice to, to look at in, in the you know moving modes. Whereas when it was in the sort of color RGB spectrum one, it was a little bit nicer, but you could still see that it was level shifting as opposed to just very nicely and smoothly changing between colors. So again, if you're after that RGB aesthetic, this might not be the best one for you. When it comes to the fan profiles and noise profiles, it was a fairly limited selection as far as I could see where you have performance or silent, or you could change a little bit of a slider in between. And that was basically it for the fans. And there didn't seem to be much control for the speed or temperature efficiency of the pump at all. So just bear that one in mind. So is this cooler worth your money? Well, I think there are some other designs that I find a little bit more preferential, especially in terms of pricing, something like a Cooler Master uh, Massa Liquid 240. That one is a really nice cooler, works very well, is also a bit slimmer, quieter, and uh, generally, while it doesn't have software and RGB and stuff like that, uh, it's still a little bit of just a, a nicer cooler personally. Of course, if you do want the flashy RGB coolers, then obviously this one is a nice shout. You also have the NZXT Kraken, which uh, just is a very beautiful pump design and stuff like that. And you also have the new Corsair coolers that are coming out fairly shortly, which do have RGB pumps and I believe RGB fans as well. So that should be pretty interesting. Coming back to this cooler though, taking a look at the scoring for me, this is gonna be a four for five money. When it comes to performance, I'm gonna go with a four and in terms of functionality, I'm gonna go with a, I think a four as well. When it comes to styling again, I think it's also gonna be four and in terms of detecting maybe score, it's also gonna be a four as well with a silver ward. It's a decent enough cooler. I think they could do some work on the RGB effects and obviously it's a fairly standard Ace Tech design. So the performance is pretty much what you'd expect from a standard Ace Tech cooler. Well, also providing a little bit of extra noise in uh, in this scenario with uh, the pump just being a little bit on the sort of uh, whiny side. So just bear that one in mind if you are planning on picking this up. Of course, that may d differ between units. My, you know, mine may have been lightly damaged in shipping or something, but uh, either way, it's just something to bear in mind if you are planning on picking these up. But with that said, that's my thoughts. I'd love to hear yours in the comments down below. Is this something that you think about picking up? Is it something you already have? Or is this a bit too sort of gaudy RGB for you? Let me know in the comments down below I'd love to hear from you. If you'd like to know any more about the cooler or check out the pricing when and where you watch this take a look at the link in the description down below. If you'd like to support these videos that come out on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday basis then feel free to take a look at the Patreon link down below where you can support me directly and get sort of rewards and stuff like that for it or you can check out the Amazon and Overclockers UK affiliate links down there too which also massively help out and genuinely help me pay my rent and stuff like that so if you can use those when you're buying anything on those sites that'd be fantastic. There is also some other links and stuff down there too if you want to check them out and of course if you're new to the channel feel free to hit that subscribe button too there's some other videos over here for you to check out and that's pretty much it so i hope you enjoyed it and found it useful and informative if you have any questions let me know in the comments down below and we'll see you all in the next video